what are some of the challenges that you face? Um, a lot of times some of the challenges I face with break-ins, um, learning how to deal with people that steal your livelihood um, when someone breaks in. They not only just steal your product, but they steal the things that you try to give back to the public. When you, when you walk in your door and it's been broken in, and you get ready to start your day and all of your clippers are gone, or you come in and your air conditioner is stolen out the window, or they smash windows in just for the sake of doing it, that, that takes away from the business and you just have to keep pushing forward, trying to satisfy people who sometimes can't be satisfied uh, dealing with people who have bad moods and are mad at other barbershops for being closed or mad at uh, the world for whatever reason, but they come in and want to take it out on you because they feel like that's the right thing to do. That's crazy. Uh, when did you feel that you had been called to become a minister? Oh, God told me early in life, he said, you're going to preach, but not now. So for that, I just went on living my life. I enjoyed it to the fullest. And one night I had a dream. And the dream confirmed that God said, it's time. And I was baffled for a while. And my wife said, have you answered the call? And I said, I don't know. So I went and I prayed to God and I answered the call. And when you answer the call of ministry, it's like answering your phone. You did answer it. So when you answer it, is your answer, yes, God, I know God. But I answered and I said, yes, God, I accept this call. Okay. So now that you are a minister, do you see a change in yourself? Oh, many changes, many changes. Uh, your conscience will eat you up a lot because of who you are, who you're working for, and what you represent. And once you start to work for God and you represent God, many of your actions is in question. So when I speak to you wrongly, my conscience is going to bother me to know that I need to tell Chris I'm sorry. I need to say Chris I was wrong. And until I do, it will constantly bother you. Yeah, it will go away, but when I see you again, it's going to come back. Yeah, it's still on your shoulder like yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. And it's like, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? So it's a lot of people may think or say, my conscience don't bother me. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it, it does, but you can ignore it all you want. Mm -hmm. But I know that as a minister of the gospel now, it's a combination with my work. I get a chance to cut, I get a chance to minister, I get a chance to talk. And some people like the combination of both because they get a chance to talk to the preacher. And sometimes they don't go to church. So sometimes the only church they're gonna get is when they come and see me. Yeah. So it's my job also, not to preach every time they come here because I don't do that, but if you need something from me that I got from God, I'm willing to give it to you. Are there any regrets to the journey that you've taken in life so far? Mm -hmm. No major regrets. Um, I used to think, you know, I, I'd do better in the city. But God has still blessed me to have everything that I pretty much wanted since I've been here. Uh, some things was a struggle. Yeah. It hadn't been easy. It's been times when some bills got paid, some lights got cut off. But I was still able to bounce back. Um, you know, sometimes, if you never learn from your experiences, you never learn anything. You know, some people say, if I could do it over again, that's why you can't do it over again. You're supposed to learn from it. Yeah. And if for whatever reason that chance come by again, then you can do it over again. Those but, should have put a wood or something yeah, yeah. serious. So when you learn that, let me try to do this better. Mm -hmm. If I got a chance to come back to you and then you be friends again because I messed it up the first time, now I don't need to mess it up this time. And you make it accept my apology if you know it's sincere. Uh, but just having regrets about what I've been blessed with, no, I, I 
took one of the best jobs that, that is allowed in the world. I can do pretty much whatever I want to do and still get paid to do it. So now that you are between both worlds, you know, you got the church world and you got the barbershop world, what's some of the best advice that you've given to someone who's sat in that church pew or in that barber chair? It varies from person to person. Um, some of the things you look at when they come in, and the younger crowd, I try to always encourage them to never give up. And I use some of the people down the street as an example of it doesn't take much to be a bomb. You don't have to have a resume to be a drunk or a drug addict. All you got to do is just kind of fall down and have someone that is already down there where you're at to keep you down. Now, if you fall down and someone is willing to pick you up, well, you got a heavy hand. But if, if you, you, you look down and, and you're down and people just keep you down and push you down, you never get back up. You see just as many young drug addicts as you do old. Yeah. So for the older people, I, I challenge them a lot of time to, because the younger group are looking at the older group. And it's kind of like the older generation versus the younger generation. You can't get rid of older people in the church because they're the foundation. But you gotta groom the young people so that they can become a part of the foundation. So, and then again, you can't get rid of all the young because they're the tomorrows coming up. Because our day may be past and gone. So we gotta have something in place so that the younger generation can come up and have a guideline, a guidepost to grab hold to. Because okay. well, you know what, the young people they get bored. Yes. And the older people don't like change. So. I've seen things in churches where they kind of compromise and, 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 and some Sundays they got praise and worship and all the young people are up praising and worshiping. And then I see sometimes where they got devotion and when they have the, the, the levels of devotion, uh, some of the young people are like, I don't really get into that. But you gotta combine both worlds and you gotta learn how to communicate with both sets of people. Just think the pastor, he is looking at what do I do? Am I going to stay old school or do I go new school? You know, do I play some Pharrell and Marvin Gaye or, Ma or Robin Thicke or do I play Marvin Gaye? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you want to do or do you want to grab the Snoop Dogg here? You got to learn what's going to work for your church, your congregation. You got to learn what works for the young people versus the old. I'm kind of in the middle because I have uh, kids in their 20s. My oldest daughter's 30, and my youngest kid is 13. And when I look at these different generations, there's different variations of what they like and what they don't like. So sometimes if we just listen to what people like, and sometimes before people can fold or get mad yeah. and don't come to church or don't come with people like just ask, well, why can't we do such and such? And a lot of things can be incorporated in, in church, at your house, you know, because I want to listen or hear some of the music my children are listening to. Yeah. And if I'm okay with it, you listen. But if you're listening to something I don't want you to listen to, and I hear it, yeah. I'm going to stop you. That's my job as a parent, because when I leave here, I'm not the barber anymore. I go home to a wife, and I go home to our children. And when I go home to that, then I become a father again and a husband. So I have to take off one hat and put on another. Yeah. So you talk about being around kids. What do you say to that one young man that says they want to be just like you? I ask them to be patient. Look at what I'm doing, and I will show you and teach you as much as I can. But in this business, you got to learn that there's a lot of sacrifice. Anything you want in life, there are sacrifices. And the sacrifices you make, if you want to be like me, I'll show you. But I'm home, I'm here every Saturday unless my wife and I are out of town or I'm sick. Out of these 20 years, I've been here. I haven't been off five Saturdays. Now, we've taken vacations, but we take them through the week. Yeah. 
and I was out last year because of illness. But as soon as I was well, I was back here because this is my livelihood. And this is how I put bread on the table. In other words, this is how I got bread and butter on. So I can't just sit home and, and do nothing as opposed to saying, I need to go to work. Yeah. Uh, some of my greatest aspirations was my uncles, and, and I talk about them a lot, but they were two guys, they were twins, Ron and Don, and they worked a lot, and I never saw them complain about working. Uh, they worked under some strenuous work conditions, but they were two men that worked hard at being their best, and they always worked hot or cold. So I grabbed hold of that because I'm saying, it's cold, I'm still going to work. It's hot, I'm still going to work. I don't feel the best, I'm still going to work. See, many times we make excuses about why we can't go to work instead of finding a way to go to work. You ask God for a job, and then when you bless you with one, the first thing you want to do is figure out a way to get out of it. Yeah. The work can still get paid. Yes. Uh, you mentioned 20 years of being in the business or being in this location. What do you intend for your lasting legacy to be? My lasting legacy? To show people that longevity should all be the main focus. I didn't go in business to stay in it 20 years. I just started a business. But the longer I've been in it, the more I want. The more I want a strong business mindset. You want to be able to pass this on to somebody and say, this is what I've done. Sometimes when you see a business, a business that will last a long time, some of the first things you want to do is say, man, can I, can I accomplish the same thing that they did? Now, you may not have the same outcome. You may have more or less. But can you do 20 years? Because the average person I know Every business that's been in this particular building, and it's been many since the 60s, has never stayed in business as long as I have in this building. So it's been a goal to me to continue to push. No, it's not been easy. Sometimes it's been very hard. I've had some great months and some bad years. You know, those July months, those uh, going back to school months in August, those uh, Easter haircut months. But all that has changed. So you just got to pray and ask that God will allow your business to grow and prosper. Yes. And this business has been very good to me because there's been days that I've come in here broke. But God blessed me to have money when I leave. Is it thousands? No. Is it hundreds? Sometimes. Sometimes it's just enough to get me to the next day. Yes. But tomorrow's not promised. So if you do well today, just thank God that you're blessed. Will there ever be a successor to Mr. Vincent's barbershop? I don't know at this point. My youngest son, Dion, like I say, uh, he's almost 13. I said 13 earlier, but he's 12. He'll be 13 in a few months. And I want to train him to do this. Um, but I'm not sure I'd like for him to be. But I like for him to do whatever he feels is best for him. Um, this was my dream. This may not be history. And I know that sometimes we as parents, we push our children to finish our dreams up. This is my dream. God has blessed me to do okay and, and, and exceedingly well. But it's not history. Now, I'll teach him the business aspect of it. And he may want to own a barbershop and not work there. Yeah. So if he wants to do that, I'm still fine with that. I want to teach him how to work. Every day I talk to my son, he said, Dad, how many customers you got? Well, it's going to get better. Uh, we're going to do this right here. And uh, I teach him and I show him how to do what I'm doing because I want him to understand the business of it. And that's one of the things that I learned with about Jackson. I was cutting hair when I got to him. But the business portion of, of, of being a barber, I didn't understand as well. So Mr. Willie Bob taught me that. 
Now, when I came upon the Cecil, he gave me my foundation. He taught me how to cut. He taught me how to talk to customers, how to communicate, how to make myself available, how to sell me to the customer. Once I learned how to sell me, I think I'm the best salesman in the world because I'm confident that what I'm doing, you're going to like. Because if I do what I think I can do for you, I'm almost 100% that you're going to be satisfied with my work. Any lasting words of wisdom? If so, look to the camera and say what you need to say. Wisdom is what you gain throughout life. And as you obtain wisdom, and it's given to you by God, be able to share it with as much as you can. Not saying that you're a know-it-all, but the things that God has blessed you with to know and learn, that's gonna be the many people that cross your pathway that need that wisdom to go to the next stage in their life. And if you've been blessed with it, continuously be blessed and share it with others. I thank Christy for this time. Uh, she's a great friend. I've been known her a very long time. So I think she is gonna go so far in this business. Thank you so much. Thank you for granting me this time to interview you. I like this. You got to do it again. Oh, I'll be ready. <laughs> I'll be ready.